Hey guys and welcome to Whistleberry Arts Tutorials. Today we're going to be doing something really cool creating smoke photography and we're going to do that using a couple of things. We're going to either use incense sticks, you can buy these at your local dollar store. You could use something like a cigar or a cigarette, um, but these are really really stinky so you have to be very careful if you're doing something like this. Or the other thing that you could use are these little guys right here and these are uh, incense cones. They're a little harder to come by than the incense sticks but they work really well too but the idea is really anything that's going to generate a constant flow of wispy smoke but you have to remember if you're working in an enclosed space and you'll want to be in an enclosed space because uh, you don't want a whole lot of airflow except that which you create you have to be very careful because incense can get really smelly so if you have smell sensitivities um, this can be really tricky so make sure you get a flavor that you like or an aroma that you like the cones you can get these unscented I'm not sure about the sticks but I know this one happens to be an unscented cone which is a little bit better and of course you're gonna need something, uh, you know, like a lighter, something to light your stuff with. The other thing that you're going to need is a piece of cardboard, a few pieces of cardboard actually. This is just this uh, cork board. You buy this at the dollar store as well. You may want to use a tripod. You don't have to because we're using super high shutter speed. It's completely up to you. Of course, the other thing you're going to need is a camera. Okay, just your standard lens will be fine. You could use a macro lens uh, or some other fancy kind of lenses that require a big investment, but as long as you've got a DSLR lens that has a hot shoe so that you can use the external flash, not the flash that pops up on your camera. You don't want to use that. We're going to be using external flash. <laughs> Your external flash is going to be something similar to this. This is a Nikon Speedlight. Um, these don't have to be super expensive. They don't have to be super complex. They just have to be able to create this. Your flash is going to take AA batteries and your flash is gonna chew up your batteries, you know, like they're bubble gum. Go to Costco and get one of those big giant mega packs and uh, don't forget to recycle your batteries because they're gonna die quick. You're also going to have to have a way to make them fire off camera, meaning your flash is not actually going to be attached to your camera. Normally, you've got your foot here, you've got your shoe here, and normally they would go on together. Normally they would go on together. Six months later. Normally they would go on together to look something like this, but you're actually going to have your camera and your flash offside. So this is where your investment comes in. You're going to need a transmitter and a receiver. So these are the Godox X1. This is a little bit older, they're a little harder to find now, but you can find them. Now basically the transmitter is an external box just like this. This says T on it, so you know it's the transmitter. And the receiver is actually inside, it's built into the newer flashes. But you can still buy these two unit things, which actually I just bought two sets of them today. Finally, you're going to need a secondary light. So you can just use the light on your phone. This is not really going to do anything except allow you to see the smoke uh, so that you can get your images in focus before you fire your shots. Because when this is on, this is gonna be on one side, your flash is going to be on the other side, and then this flash is gonna pop super bright and basically make this invisible compared to the power of the flash that you're going to see. So I'll show you how this gets set up. Okay, so this is my setup. I've got my flash here. I've got my camera, of course, with my transmitter. That's going to send the signal from the camera to the flash in order for the flash to fire. Over here, I've got my incense stick. I've just used a couple of pieces of black packing foam to stick it into to hold it upright. There's a million ways you can do it. You could use an actual incense holder. Again, you can just buy those things at the dollar store. I've also used this little clamp, so maybe you can just clamp it like that if you wanted to. All right, again, dollar store item. Very, very simple. Uh, but you need to be able to hold your stick upright. Over here, I've got my side light, and that's just going to let me see the smoke. And then in the center, of course, I've got my stick and it's stuck into the black foam. A couple of other things to notice. I've got my black background back here. You need that dark background in order to be able to see the smoke. I also have another piece of this 
blackboard right here. And this is a f called a flag. But what it's doing is when this light flashes, it's going to send light straight out but it's also going to send light this way and that way. It goes out like a cone. Uh, and we don't want there to be light on the background back there. The same goes for this side here with this light. If I were to take that card away, it would reflect onto that background and we don't want that. So now, make sure that all your components are on, all your lights, your receivers, your transmitters, your camera. Light your incense. So right now we're looking through the back of the viewfinder of the camera. You can see my settings are 1 200th of a second. That's our shutter speed. I've got it at F11. You don't want too much shallow depth of field. And then my ISO is about 200. Don't go any higher than that. Somewhere between 100, 160, 200. That's about it. I have uh, one video lamp I'm gonna turn off and let's take a shot. And that's what you get. Let's try it again. See, so it's nice and soft, nice and blue. Now I didn't do anything to try to get my smoke in focus yet. So I'm going to just take a second to make sure that it's in focus the way I want it to be. And that just takes a little bit of eyeball and a little bit of practice. And now you want to get all those really neat curls. So this is really kind of boring right now, but if I make a little wave, then you start getting all the curls. Now you've got something. Another thing you can do is you can actually sort of direct this light on your flash even a little bit more. And I'll show you how to do that. So I've literally just used a little cardboard box there from an Indiana Jones toy. Head for the fireplace, huh? And now instead of that light kind of coming out and spreading in that cone shape, it's going to come out much more rectangular. And then what that does is that directs the light directly into that smoke. So the other thing, I don't think I said this yet, but you want to make sure that this light is cutting straight across your stream of smoke so that it highlights it best. And the smoke is really unpredictable. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what it's going to do. You're never, ever, ever going to take the same photo twice. And you're never, ever, ever going to take the same photo as somebody else. Sometimes your flash will misfire, you'll miss it. The, like I said, the batteries, as the batteries run down, you're, you may miss some of your shots. So as you can see now, I'm not getting any flash. So I already have to change my batteries. Stay tuned. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time, cards. So I've tried something else as well, and I've tried to make it look like this cigar is lit and smoking. Now the cigar has been burned down a little bit. It's not lit, it's not smoking. I don't advocate smoking at all. Please let that be very, very clear. But this adds a little extra visual element. So it's not just the smoke that you're creating, but also giving it some context, which is pretty cool. So it took some doing. I had to use some wire and I had to sort of support the cigar. So you can see, it's just stuck into that foam and then the stick is right behind it and it'll just burn and burn and burn and it never really moves. And then when it's all framed up, it looks like the smoke is coming from the end of the cigar uh, and then I can just Photoshop the wires and the stick that you will see in the shot. So one last disclaimer when it comes to using incense sticks or fire of any kind. Keep something nearby that you can use to put it out. I've got a little thing of sand, uh, but a little glass of water, a bucket, something nearby to make sure that if you need to do something quick in a hurry or even to just take out the burning ember on your incense, just stick it in the sand or water, no more incense. So we've burned incense sticks. We didn't burn any of the cones, that's okay. It's basically the same principle as using the sticks, just it burns a little bit differently, it gives you a bit of a wider billow of smoke, but it's exactly the same process. The only thing you have to be aware of when it comes to the incense cones is they do get really hot. So make sure that you're putting them on top of something like a piece of glass or a piece of metal, something that's not going to get too hot or burn through. I learned that the hard way. And then of course we simulated burning a cigar. Next, we'll move on to another tutorial, and in that tutorial, we will look at different ways that you can edit these photos to make them even cooler than they already are.
So till then, take it easy. I'm Ken Turner. This is Whistleberry Arts Tutorials. We'll see you next time.